Okay, this is an oral hist this is part of the oral history project. It's an interview of Edith Sancroft. This is being done in her office. And this is at uh, Suite AX13 on November 22nd, 1994. I'm Carol Pohl and I teach sociology. Um, I'm doing the oral history. Uh, <laughs> okay, do you want to start about what your name is, position, and how okay. long you've been here? And I'm Edith Sancroft. I am a professor of health and physical education. I uh, have been here 31 years, <laughs> which is quite a long time. Uh, let's see, I just returned uh, this semester from uh, a brief <laughs> Not so brief, three years as acting dean of liberal arts. Uh, where do I go from here? Um, well, I think you were, uh, my understanding, you developed the dance program here? Yes, I did. When I came in 1964, one of the first things I did was to uh, develop the dance program. There had been some dance here before, but um, I developed a broader program. And uh, we've grown into a nice uh, group. Uh, we have uh, a variety of offerings, uh, modern dance and uh, jazz. And uh, next semester or the uh, following semester, we will probably introduce ballet. Um, a lot of our students are interested in dance on both the uh, beginner's level and the intermediate level, although we haven't been that successful with the intermediate because of the scheduling of it. But uh, I've been very happy with the growth of the program. What do you mean the scheduling? Um, well, we have... Once you get to an intermediate level, it means that we're taking a variety of students from uh, different majors. And so if we set up, we select a Tuesday as the best day. It may not be uh, the greatest schedule for all, you know, five or six different majors, and therefore we cannot get the numbers that we like. So, uh, I ran it for about four semesters, maybe five. But I felt the numbers were not uh, what they should be. So, um, but we may introduce it again, the intermediate level of dance, because students are asking about it again. What was the thinking of the program and developing the dance program? Why did you develop the dance program here at FIT? Well, I thought it was natural. I mean, it was here, but um, I thought it was natural that when you're doing um, fashion, I see fashion as, as very related to all art forms. And um, I just felt that it was the appropriate place. We have uh, students who are, are, are gifted in, in certain areas of the arts and design, and I think that, in a sense, dance, uh, choreography is, is a form of designing. It's through movement. So I, I always think of it as a natural kind of thing. I also think it's very important that uh, people who design uh, begin to understand their bodies and, and, and learn how to move. And that's important. Because all of our clothing is designed for moving bodies, and I think that's important that they understand that. When you think back over the years that you've been here, how has the school uh, changed? Right. Maybe we could start with, what was the school like 31 years ago? Um, well, I'll tell you, just after I got here, in, in I uh, came in 64, by the end of the 60s, the school had, uh, well, we were in some very exciting times at that point. Uh, it, the Vietnam War was uh, uh, going on, uh, the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, the school was very much, the, the faculty and the students and staff were very much involved in all of the activities, so it was extremely exciting. Uh, there was a lot of um, participation uh, in it. It was also a time when uh, our faculty association was was um, very, very active. I mean, we had meetings and uh, they were very uh, popular, they were attended regularly. At the same time, it was the beginning of the union, so it was the beginning of a lot of things uh, here at FIT. 
And uh, I would say the late 60s and, and the 70s were, were very exciting times and busy times in terms of developing, um, you know, the association, the union, and also the curriculum. There were some changes in the curriculum, and, and there was a lot of growth in the school at that point. Uh, could you spell out some of the changes in the curriculum that you have in mind when you're thinking about? Well, as, as a result of uh, the activity at the end of the 60s, the Civil Rights Movement, we uh, ultimately ended up with some uh, new art courses. Uh, the pre-Columbian art was brought, uh, brought in the um, African art. Um, and so we had new courses uh, being entertained uh, at that point and established. Um, I'm trying to think, there were several additions to, to major areas uh, at that point. Uh, I'm trying to be specific here. Uh, what, what about your own department? Did you see your department? Oh, in, in our department, uh, by mid-70s, uh, we separated from the uh, science and math area. Initially, we were part of, of that group, and by then, uh, we grew, uh, and uh, we separated from them. Our offerings also uh, grew. When I first came here, we had a lot of—we of, of, had quite a, a large variety. Uh, we had at that point we had bowling and we had uh, we used to go to the swimming pool um, on occasion because we were able to use the uh, the swimming pool on 24th Street. Is that the McBurney uh, Y? Uh, no, it wasn't the McBurney. It was a, a, another Y that was here and then it was torn down. Uh, but we were able to use that, and we had you know, bicycling and skating in Central Park and, and that type of thing. And then during the 70s, we began offering uh, uh, courses like the yoga course, and uh, we, we started taking a new direction. Our health course developed, and um, later on at the end of the 70s and the 80s, then we got into uh, stress management and things like that. But we began offering aerobics. Uh, became important in the, the late 70s, early 80s, so that we took a new direction and offered uh, a, a lot more. And um, there was, the major issue was we separated from the science and, and math area. Uh, prior to that, most of us uh, who were in the health and physical education at that time taught um, biology courses, too so that I had a, a bio program as well. And the original founders had put the uh, two departments together? Yes, the science, math, and, and uh, health and physical education. It was under Bill Leader, who initially hired me. And it must have been a dramatic difference to separate not really. Uh, we remained close for uh, a long period because some of us were still teaching some courses, even though we separated in that area for a while. Yeah. How did the separation occur? What was the mechanism? Well, when we uh, actually, when we started offering two required courses, uh, the department grew. And um, we had enough people at that point, full-time people, to um, allow us to separate and be a, a, a department. We were an associate department, in a sense, because uh, we had, uh, I think it was four full-time or, or five full-time people at that point. So we became a separate department. So it came from the department you requested? Yes. Uh, when uh, and it's much the same right now. When you have a certain number of full-time people, you do separate uh, and become a separate department. I don't know if the numbers are the same today as they were before. It's much like the foreign language area finally became a separate entity because they, they had enough full and the combination of full and part-time people. They were formerly with? 
they were formally sort of attached to the uh, liberal arts area under Gladys Marcus. And so they were never really a separate department. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could we talk about the students that were here in the, uh, you know, when you began 31 years ago, if you can remember? What were they like? If you, I'm a sociologist. If you think of them in terms of gender, of ethnicity, and socioeconomic status, were they the first in their generation to go to college? Were they from fashion Ma industry backgrounds? Many of them were first generation students. Um, we had mostly female students. Uh, I would say 95 percent to 95 to 96 percent were uh, female students. I could remember um, it was unusual for me to have uh, a male in my class at the beginning. Uh, but then as, you know, as time went by, now I, I could look, well, it's true this semester I only, well, I only have one male in one class and in the others I have two in each. Those but, dance classes? Uh, one is an aerobics class and the other are dance classes, yes. And so I have a, a few more males in the class, but initially I didn't have any for the most part. But as time went by, I would say by mid-70s, I, I had more and more males uh, coming to class. And when I say more and more, I have yeah, large numbers, but there were males present in the class. And it does add something to the class because uh, it's a new dimension. They, they, they move slightly uh, differently. They have a different approach to things, and it makes uh, a, a more balanced class. And ethnically, the students that were... Uh... Uh, I would say that the minority population was very small. Uh, very the, few numbers, African Americans? Uh, very few. Uh, very few, a uh, few Latino Asian. Americans, very uh, few Asian uh, students. Um, and it's changed uh, dramatically from 64 on, until, you know, uh, our present uh, configuration now, but uh, how has it changed? Well, we have a, a larger minority representation, uh, particularly in the Asian population, um, and I would say the Latin American population. Uh, we uh, during the late sixties and early seventies, we did a lot of recruiting. I mean, I uh, was part of a group that Marion Brandris uh, set up, and we went to various high schools, and we did recruiting uh, minority students. Um, and I think at that point, that's when we be uh, became a lot more aware of the serious work we had to do. And. Did you see a change in, uh, at, at that time, were most of the students working and going to school? Uh, students were working and going to school, but not in the large numbers that they are today. I think more students today are working uh, than long ago. Uh, we had a greater number of students participating in club activities because, uh, well, they, they, they were not working. And the other uh, reasons, we had classes, for the most part, classes ended at 4 o'clock. So if you had a club, um, you could meet from 4 to 6. I taught a 4 to 6 class, but that was unusual. Uh, most of the classes ended at 4. So students would be available from 4 to 6 to uh, participate in club activities. Um, in the 60s and 70s and very early 80s, uh, I would have uh, a master class in, in dance that I would give uh, in the large gymnasium uh, once every semester. And we would have people like Mary Anthony come in, uh, Charles Weidman, uh, Sevilla Fort, you know, uh, one of the named dancers. And they would come in and uh, teach. And we would have 150 people in that uh, gymnasium. And uh, today, to get that kind of participation, you know, it would be very difficult because everyone is um, either they're working or, or they're, they, they have other commitments. And so it's difficult to get them to really participate 
and extracurricular activity. I, I think that's one of the major changes. They're mostly commuter students uh, at that time, like in the 60s. Yeah, they commuted, but um, still they were able to participate. Yeah. yeah. They were able to participate, yeah. Did you get a sense the students were from backgrounds in the uh, apparel industry or fashion industries? Not necessarily, no. I would tend to say, uh, no, not necessarily. Okay, if you would discuss today your experiences with the, the change students, I mean, we have students, the international students who mm -hmm. come here. That program was introduced at some point at FIT. Mm -hmm. And new immigrant students. Mm -hmm. Have you always, have you seen large groups of immigrant students come here over the years you've been here? I think they were here. I think what we did uh, is openly or, or actively go out and recruit more. Um, I mean the foreign the students? Foreign the foreign students. students. The international students. Um, I think it, it, it was part of what every college uh, started doing eventually, uh, to getting uh, getting involved in, in, in recruiting international students. Uh, I think the students that we get, the international students, are strong students. I've had uh, many of them in my classes, and um, I find that they're, you know, on top of things, they're uh, open to new ideas, they're, uh, there's a level of sophistication that uh, I find is refreshing. And so, uh, yeah, I think they add something to FIT, the international students. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen any other changes that over the time that you'd like to identify, discuss? I think faculty participation is slightly different. Uh, uh, I think there was more uh, way back. Maybe we were closer because we were in one building and it was more of a family kind of thing. Um, so that everybody either met in the cafeteria, which was, you know, in the C building, and um, there was a lot more interacting. Now that, I, I guess it's natural when, when, when you're a small group of people, you can do that. Now that we have, you know, so many buildings, a lot of people from the D building never get to the A building for lunch, and so you tend not to see people uh, for a whole semester. Sometimes you see them the first day, and then you don't see them again until, you know, convocation. So I think that there's a difference there. Uh, from your vantage point, how has industry influenced the shaping of uh, F FIT, the college? I think initially it was it, it played a, a very large part in the shaping of, of the college. Um, I think that many of the early, um, you know, Shirley Goodman was involved with with, with much of industry, so. Um, Many of the things that were done here, uh, you know, kind of dovetail or was very closely related to someone in the industry or people in the industry. Um, I don't know if that's as much that way now. I think in certain areas it's like that. I think uh, in parts of business and technology there's still that, that, that closeness. Um, I, I just I just don't know. I, I, I know an area like toy design. It's probably very, very connected with the industry. And of course, the, the uh, cosmetics marketing. Uh, but I don't know if they connect in the same way that, that they did before when we were a very small group of people. I don't know how uh, closely knit we are with the industry at this point. Uh, you were aware when there was like the one building in a small college of the influence of industry. Yeah. 
You could identify individuals, people could Yes, identify. You, you, you knew people from the industry who were coming in and out. Oh. And, um, Do you remember names? Or industries? It's a tough question. Yeah. You know, there were those people... Um, that buildings were named after, you know, Dubinsky and all of right. those people uh, coming in and out. Um, well, they were designers, but, but you know, these, they still do that kind of thing. Uh, but there, there was that tie. Now, it could be, it's just that we're so large at this point that you don't see, you know, you're not riding the same elevator and, and, and that kind of thing, so the connections may be there, but... What about the union? The unions that sh were the unions from the industry and the union here, what roles do you think they played in, in shaping the college? I, I think that... Uh, just the fact that they were all looking for the same kinds of things, um, working conditions. The UCE, uh, you mean, or the outside unions? Well, I think both the UCE and, and the outside. I think they had a lot in common. And so I think uh, there was a, a point where we learned from other unions and... Uh, Sure, there was a sharing of, of information and knowledge, and, and I think there was even support. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, um, some of the critical issues we're putting into the archives are, if you remember any experiences that you think should be, you know, recorded in history here, you can deal with your own program or things you saw at the school. Well, I guess you mentioned when you talked about the star dances, for one thing, that's, you know, the outstanding dances that came. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I what still have dances? records of, of, of all of that. So definitely that should be included. Um, gee, there were so many things I don't know how to weigh. It can be things, it doesn't have to be significant things, it can be fun things. Well, I'm, I'm looking at Mildred, and I think that one of the things that should be put in there is, is, is the development of, of the educational skills area, because it was developed by people, a variety of people. People like Barry Karp was involved in that initial uh, committee. Um, I was involved, people from David Zeiger, uh, Carol Reams, and I'm going to leave out people, but we all volunteered to, to get this com um, committee going, and then it developed into a department, but the writing of grants and all of that sort of stuff uh, that um, the committee worked on and, and Mildred worked on for years and years and years. I think that's an important thing. I mean, that w that was a real commitment, uh, a, a willingness to give up time to to. We graded, um, you know, the papers and and, and that kind of thing, um, and we came in on Saturday, and this was all voluntary. And I think that's an important thing. What was the uh, the development of it? How did it start? the educational skills? Well, Mildred uh, came here and, and started talking about there was a need for um, remedial work in certain areas, and so then it developed through grants. Uh, Mildred was initially on grants, and uh, all the people who were teaching were initially that way. And uh, she just kept writing grants and writing grants and writing grants, and the department grew. And, uh, and then the school finally uh, took over and said they would continue the work once the grants ran out. They still are receiving some grants, but uh, the major grants uh, are no longer there. Was the need identified by the president that we, the faculty, that we have students 
that need help? I think it was hiring? more in the English department that it was um, initially felt. Okay. All right, we're winding down with the interview. Mm -hmm. Is there something else that uh, you think should be part of the story of FIT? Gee, they were, <laughs> they were very, they were just some very interesting, exciting times uh, at FIT. Uh, I think we had an unusual series of presidents. Uh, I came here um, just before Jarvi came, uh, Dr. Jarvi, and uh, he was here a short period of time, and then Marvin came, and I think um, it was an interesting connection or a very, um, it was a, a loving connection between the president, Marvin, and, and the faculty, uh, for the most part, and staff. And um, he had a charisma. Uh, and uh, it was just an unusual period of time. OK. Uh, thank you very much. You're quite welcome. I hope I covered. I know tomorrow I'm going to think of a thousand things. Always, uh, <laughs> you know, it's fascinating. You know what you said, because there's certain themes that come through. Most people talk about FIT as a family. Mm -hmm. You know, the people have been, and you characterize it so beautifully. It was like a loving relationship mm -hmm. with them, without a doubt. I don't know if you've noticed that. I've heard it mm -hmm. in many of them. This kind of relationship that it just worked very well. It worked very well. You know, I've heard it from union people mm -hmm. who should be on the other side, yeah. supposedly. Yeah. I've heard it from uh, There was something very... Now, special. he was very special. Yeah. You made a point of doing things. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. You know, in your department, I mean, the guys will tell you, I mean, off the record, they mm -hmm. had the tape shut off mm -hmm. many times. I mean, the, uh, the present administration, they saw such a change, but I've well, heard this from many places. I didn't even want to get into that. No, no, I, absolutely. <laughs> this isn't... Yeah. Uh, but it just come through so very clearly. Okay. Things I'm interested, which I have been exploring, is the change. My sense is, mm -hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong, because mm -hmm. this is that FIT has been a major means for first generation college people to, right. to move up. Right. The international students are the more upper middle class. Right. And from what I've heard, I suspect. I mean, it would it be interesting to do some research? They're all, often. Families are in the apparel industry someplace mm -hmm. else. They send them here to FIT, whether right. it's India or Canada, as you know, it's mm -hmm. the places. Mm -hmm. But FIT has been a means for upward mobility for a lot of, of... Not only for students, but for faculty. Yeah. A lot of faculty. Yeah, a yeah. lot of faculty. Faculty also, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and it's, you know what I have? <coughs> What it's hard to get. You don't hear it so much in the arts. Mm -hmm. You have to really start um, interviewing the people. Is the role of industry in shaping the college? Because we're it's kind difficult of difficult for us to pick that up. Though. Yeah, but they would. They it's the difficult. key families. You know, Lou Stolen is someone that the half, the uh, half, and Mazer, and, yeah. and I, I think Dietrich. it's Mazer. Mazer. Yeah, Mazer, I've heard the name Mazer. Um, See, I don't know the industry, so uh, Dyke was a name, I think. Lou knows them more because once he became involved in the union. Um, right. I'm trying to think of these other names because there were people. See, Dubinsky, I, I, I remember clearly yeah, because. Yeah, Dubinsky, and there's another. It's the union person. There was another union person that was mentioned. Oh, God. Well, it's interesting to see how, you know, patrons shaped it. You know, his story of, and I don't doubt it for a minute, is that basically these guys got together and their children weren't going into the industry. They mm -hmm. wanted people. And so they, uh, they helped start a college. Mm -hmm. What's fascinating to me is that you described the dance program. It's such a natural, the way you envisioned it. Here's fashion, movement, and other art form. It was a wonderful characterization. Um, and and it was, to a great extent, things have been shaped because we are a fashion school. So, you know, I mean, it's liberal arts. You're That's right. being a liberal arts. Yeah. So I'm saying this is another liberal yeah. arts, but that other aspect yeah. is really 
shape things. Now, business and technology see things a little differently. Yeah. And, uh, and I think once I dealt with them, I began to see things differently, too, because they're concerned that people are thinking of this school as a fashion school and not a business school. Right. And that's, yeah. you're going to get another slant from them right. on that. Right, it was great. Thank was you. Really great. It was You'll interesting for me to go back through know, that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Having done interviews before, it is, it's kind of makes one step back and think about things, yeah. you know, that you hadn't. Yeah. And I know there were things that I, I totally forgot. It's all right. You know, yeah. this is, this is, it's not a scientific study mm -hmm. about, you know, but the history of the college is really going to come through in terms of. It's there, you know, yeah. because uh, people are saying similar things. And it's, you know, I've, I'm not sure. This, the size of the building, without a doubt, I've heard this expression. It's a family. We were a family. That's right. Closeness. Some of it was size. Yeah. We're in building. The building, some of it was Feldman and things he did. That's very clear. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it, there was this real strong sense of people really doing, just like she said, this educational skills, so putting a lot of time and effort. In a lot of committees. Yeah. yeah. In a, a lot, lot of, of things that yeah. above, above and beyond. Mm -hmm. It was fascinating. And it was wonderful. I love to hear you talk Thank about you. the dance. It was so poetic. You know, really, our dance developed as an art form, and it makes sense. You know, with yeah, fashion. I think it's movement, yeah. yeah. All right, great. Thank okay, you. So that was it. I hope it was basically painless too. Aye, aye. <laughs>